Hello everyone. Welcome back to Brain Blitz Audios. So today we're going to be looking at an exciting aspect of Matrix. Today we're going to be looking at an exciting new episode and today's episode is titled Logarithm Tricks. So in this video, we're going to be showing you how to solve any log problem within 15 seconds. That's right. We're going to be telling you how to solve a logarithm problem in 15 seconds. You don't believe me? Let's move on and find out this amazing trick by which how we can solve logarithms super fast. But before we start out with the trick, let's look at logarithms in general so that those who do not know about them get an idea of what logarithms are. So logarithm is one of the various functions in mathematics and in math, the logarithm is the inverse function to exponentiation, such as 2 squared is equal to 4, 4 squared is equal to 16, 3 cubed is equal to 27, etc. That kind of exponentiation. So the statement means that the logarithm of a given number x is the exponent to which another fixed number, such as a base b, must be raised to produce the number x. So if this is going over your head, we have a simple example. So in simple words, a logarithm answers the question, how many of this number do we multiply to get that number? Here's an example. How many fours must we multiply to get 64? So for those of you who have studied exponentiation, you know that four cubed is equal to 64. That means four times four times four gives you 64. So we have to multiply three fours together to get 64. Please note that this is not three into four. This is four into four into four. That is why it says three of the fours. Multiplying three of the fours, that is four into four into four, will give you 64. And if this is true, then we can say that the logarithm of 64 with base four is equal to three. So if four into four into four is equal to 64, so that can be written as four cube is equal to 64. Then we can also write log 64 to the base four is equal to three. Now, people who studied logarithms, remember this definition. If a raised to n is equal to x, then log x to the base a is equal to n. So that is the very, very basic definition of how to solve a logarithm problem. So what is a logarithm and how to solve it? So that is the basic idea. However, in real life, the problems are much more complex. And so therefore, we need to find some trips and tricks in order to solve problems such as the ones with logarithms. Now, remember my earlier claim that I can solve a log problem within 15 seconds. Now it has a lot more history than that meets the eye. So the logarithm with base 10 is called as the common logarithm. So it'll be written just as log and then the number such as X or Y. So this is called as the common logarithm. And it has a lot of applications in science that is physics, chemistry, biology, and its various branches, and especially in engineering. There's another kind of logarithm called as natural logarithm, and it has the number E, which is a long number, which is called as the Euler's number, that is approximately equal to 2.718. And the number E acts as the base of this log. So it'll be log to the base E, and then the number X, Y, or any other number. The use of the natural logarithm is also widespread, especially in mathematics and physics because it is easier to differentiate and integrate the values of log e. And differentiation and integration are other ways of simplifying functions in mathematics. The binary logarithm is another special logarithm, so it has the base two. So log two to the base, log x to the base two. And this is the one that's commonly used in computer science. And we can also note that logarithms are examples of concave functions, 
concave functions and functions with their graphs with a bowel shape, so that is concave. And these were introduced by John Napier in 1614. And these are revolutionary because logarithms were used as a means of simplifying calculations. So in the earlier days, before the invention of the analytical engine by Charles Babbage, the, the way that scientists used to solve problems faster were logarithms. And so they were rapidly adopted by navigators, scientists, engineers, surveyors, and others. And the reason why they adopted it is that we can perform high accuracy computations easily using logarithms. So it provides a catalyst to perform computations easily and with high accuracy. So let's test my claim of solving any log problem in 15 seconds. So I have the value of log 78, 78.6.5.7. So can we down to 15 seconds? Here we go. And there you have it. The answer to log 78657 is 4.9. You can check it out using your scientific calculators and you will notice that it will be approximately equal to 4.9. So now you've seen how easy it is to solve it using my method. Let me show you my method. The first thing about my method is are the pros of it. The method is extremely simple and it only takes from 15 to 30 seconds to solve any log problem. Now, 30 seconds is for a beginner, and as you start practicing it, you can solve it in under 10 or even five seconds. And the beauty of this is you can apply this method to any of the values of the logarithm function. And you can do that by memorizing less values of the log functions. So, Let's show you what you actually need to memorize in order to use my method. So we have the values of log two, log three, and log seven. So these are the values that you should commit into your memory. So the value of log two is 0 0.3, the value of log three is 0 0.477, and the value of log seven is 0 0.845. So these are the three values that you learn that if you learn by heart, it will help you in solving any logarithm problems. Let's test out my hypothesis. Now, in order to simplify any logarithm function, we need to express the number in terms of two, three, and seven, and then you can apply two, three, and seven. Log two, log three, or log seven, which is the appropriate one, you can add them, you can put them in, and then you can get your answer. Simple, isn't it? Let's test out my hypothesis. Let's start with simple exercises. So here's one, log four. How do you find the value of that using my method? Well, log four is actually pretty easy. For those of you who studied exponentiation in your lower grades, you would know that two square equals four. So we can write log four as log two squared. And we can use the formula log a raised to b is equal to b dot log a. And so it'll be two log two. That'll be two into 0 0.3 which will be equal to 0 0.6. So log four is equal to 0 0.6. Now, some of you may have a doubt. The actual value of log two is 0 0.3010. Now, I appreciate those who've memorized that, but it isn't really necessary. Like I said, log is used for doing high accuracy computations easily. 
And so if you leave out some of the decimals, it doesn't make a difference. In the end, you will get the answer that you need. So for log two, it's just simple if you memorize 0.3. That's it. Now, let's look at log five. How do you solve log five? In most of the other methods, they'll ask you to memorize the value of log five, and then they'll ask you log seven, log 11, log 13, etc. So they'll ask you to memorize the primes so that you can work out with the composites. But over here, you don't need to. What you can do is you can write five as 10 by two, which is true, right? So log five, we can write that as log 10 by two. And this is similar to log A by B. And so we can write that as log A minus log B. So log 10 minus log 2. So for those of you who have studied logarithms, you'll know that log 1 is 0 and log 10 is 1. And then you know you, you should have memorized that the value of log 2 is 0 0.3, which will give us 0 0.7 as our approximate value for log 5. Simple. Do you find it interesting? Well, these are just the simple bits. Let's find out how we can make the complicated ones, the complicated problems of logarithms, super simple. Here is a typical sum that you might be asked. So these are the trick to solve log of large numbers. So here's one, log 465309. This looks like the previous one, right? Log 785, log 78657 that I just did and showed you. So here's the method that I used when solving this logarithm. So we're gonna convert 465309 into 46 point five three zero nine and since we have to divide by ten thousand in order to get this value we'll also multiply by ten thousand which is ten raised to four in order to equate it so forty six point five three zero nine into ten raised to four so for those of you who find that complicated we're just put we're just placing the decimal sign which was here four steps to the left and so the exponent will be the number of times that we skipped it. So 10 raised to four. Now, what do I do? Here we can use the process of estimation. So log 46.53 can be easily estimated to log 46 into 10 raised to four. This doesn't go, it still stays. Now, don't break your head with log 46. You can estimate it further. Log 45 into 10 raised to four. So don't worry if I've written 45, it just means that the values for log 45 and 46 are similar to each other, at least until the first decimal. So now we should convert 45. So that is log nine into five into 10 raised to four. Because you know 45 is nine into five in your multiplication tables. And then you know that nine is three squared. So log three square into five, we've done it 10 by two into 10 raised to four. So next thing that we do, now since we have log a into b we can write that as log a plus log b and in case if you're wondering how i got those rules then you have to stay till the end of the video i'll show you all of the rules of logarithms okay so back to our problem so let's write it as log 3 square plus log 10 by 2 plus log 10 raised to 4 and this becomes 2 log 3 plus 
just to simplify, this is what we did in the last problem. So log 10 minus log 2 in order to get log 5 plus log 4 log 10. Now, since we don't have space there, let's write it down here. So 2 into log 3 is 0 0.477 plus log 10 is 1 minus 0 0.3, that is log 2, and plus 4 times log 10 is 1. And let's simplify this, 477 times 2, 14, 14 plus 1, 15, to 8 plus 1, 9. So 0 0.954 plus 0 0.7 plus 4. So let's add them. So 954 plus 700. Okay, so 4 and then 5. 97 is 16. So 1.654 and plus 4. You'll get the value of log 4565309 as 5.654. Now, compared to memorizing many stuff and then applying them here, this is super simple. You only need your common sense in order to simplify the problem and the three values that I told you, log 2, log 3, log 7. So this is the way in which I solved my previous problem. Let's do another exercise. So this one is log 95,932. So first step, we convert this into a two-digit two -digit number with decibels. So 95932 becomes 95.932. And since we shifted the decimal point three places to the left, into 10 cube. Now, 95.932, I'm going to estimate this to 96. So we have log 96 into 10 cube. So now I'm going to do prime factorization of 96 in terms of 237. So, so 96 by 2 gives us 48. 48 by 2 gives us 24. 24 by 2 gives us 12, 12 by 2 gives us 6, 6 by 2 gives us 3, 3 by 3 gives us 1. So 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3. So the whole of this, I can write that as 2 raised to 5. So 96 into 10 cube will be log 2 raised to 5 into 3 into 10 cube. Let's write it down. So it becomes log 2 raised to 5 plus log 3 plus log 10 cube due to the earlier rule. Log A times B is equal to log A plus log B. And log 2 raised to 5, that is log A raised to B, becomes B log A. So 5 log 2 plus log 3 plus 3 log 10. And now let's plug in the values. Log 2, the one that you should be memorizing, 0 0.3, plus log 3, 0 0.477, plus 3 times log 10 is 1. And 5 into 0 0.3, that's 3 times 5, 15, so 1.5. So we have 1.5 plus 0 0.477 plus 3. So 3.0 plus 1.5 plus 0 0.477. So I'll put in zeros in order to compensate and to add. So let's add the 3 together. 0 plus 0 plus 7 gives you 7. 0, 0, 7 gives you 7. And 5 plus 4 gives you 9. And then 3 plus 1 gives you 4. So that gives you 
the value of log 95,932 as 4.977. So as you can see, the method is super simple. And if you don't believe me, you can just plug out your calculator and you'll get a value which is close to 4.97. So put out your scientific calculators and you'll understand that this method is super simple and super accurate. So this is the way in which we break down a logarithm problem and solve it in the best manner possible. Do you like it? Well, here's a reminder of what you should be learning when you're attempting a logarithm problem. First of all, we have these general rules. Log mn is equal to log m plus log n. So this is the product one. Next, the quotient rule. So when you have log m by n, we write it as log m minus log n. And log 10 raised to n will be equal to n. Log m raised to n is equal to n log m. So since log 10 is equal to 1, so this is actually n log 10, which becomes n into 1. And then we have the value of log 1 as 0. This stays the same always. And log 0, we cannot define it because anything raised to 0 is not defined. And then finally, we have the value of log 10 as 1. So these are the general rules of logarithm. So these are stuff that you learn when you first study logarithms at school. And so therefore, these are there in your memory. Now I need you to associate the three values that you want to learn. And when you learn these three values and apply the common sense and the tricks that I gave you, you'll be sure to get any answer for a logarithm problem. Let's review them. Log two is 0 0.3. Log three is 0 0.477. Log seven is 0 0.845. So these are the simple tips and tricks which helps us a bundle in solving logarithm problems. The beauty of logarithms is that it gives us high accuracy computations very easily. So you don't need to do much. And if you have our tricks, then solving logarithm is like a breeze. So therefore, I hope that this video was really informative and it helped you a lot in solving logarithm problems. But before we end this episode, let's give you a short problem. Log X is equal to 1.95478. And now we need to find the value of X. This is your sort of homework and we need to find the value of X. And that will be the subject of our next video about anti-logs. So we'll be able to show you how to solve anti-logs really easily. So be sure to watch this video a couple of times in order to strengthen your logarithm concepts. And if you do, and then move on to our next episode of anti-log, then you'll find that it is also like a breeze and you can solve it within a minute if you're a beginner and you can move on to solve it within 10 to 15 seconds as well. So that ends this episode of Match Tricks. So we hope, hope that you found this very informative. I assure you that you, don't, you won't find many of these trips and tricks that I told you in the market. So be sure to watch this video a couple of times in order to get associated with it. And if you want to get access to most of our fantastic, innovative, and useful informative content, then don't forget the channel is Brain Blitz Audios. Go there and hit the subscribe button and also click the notifications button that's near the description. And do also check out our description for other videos on Matrix where we solve problems in innovative ways. So be sure to check out our other videos of Matrix. It is a whole playlist and I'll provide the link in the description down below. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.